just remember the process. If I hit the drop down up top, when we're uh, receiving or when we have the revenue cycle on the customer cycle, a couple different ways that might happen. The simplest way would be if you just got paid by like a YouTube or a platform, you wait till it clears the bank and use a deposit form, possibly here, possibly with a register, possibly with bank feeds. Uh, that would be the easiest thing to do in that type of industry. If you're in an industry, however, where you have a, ch a cash register, you're typically gonna wanna use the sales receipt form when you make the payment or receive the payments and make the sale and then record the deposit of the sales that you have made. And then if you're in an accrual system, which often would happen in a situation like you're an accounting firm or you are a, a lawyer or a, 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 some, a landscaper, then you have to do the work first and invoice. If you invoice, you have the added difficulty, of course, of tracking the payments to make sure that you can collect on them. That's what we're doing now. Last time we entered the payment, now we're gonna collect on it. So that means that from a financial standpoint, if I go into the accounts receivable, it's in accounts receivable. So there, these amounts are in accounts receivable. Now we're trying to collect on them. How do we do that? We could run other reports showing the accounts receivable broken out by customer. And then in practice, we'll typically go to the tab to the left and go into the sales area. And this would be our customer center, you can call it. And we could go into the customers and close up the hand boogie if you're in the business view by the way that would be in the skip paid and paid area and then in the customers so that's where we are at in the business view and then we can search for those customers with our line items up top possibly those that have open invoices that we need to be collecting on so there we have our list of items there. I can hit the drop down here. I can send a reminder if I so choose. We can create statements because you'll note that now these in, these people have multiple uh, multiple items that are open, open. So if we're collecting the receivables, we might try to set up a system where we create statements every once in a while, every month or something like that. We might try to automate the statements, which will not only send just the invoice, but send kind of a recap of the outstanding invoices that are due at any given point in time. So we can send them a reminder, we can send statements out for our uh, for our customers to remind them to pay us. And then at some point, we of course would hope that we're going to receive the payment, which is what we're gonna imagine happens at that. This time, we could go from right here to the receive payment button, which if I was to do that, if I open that up, it's going to go to a receive payment form already selecting the customer and then the two invoices are down below that are related to this customer i'm going to close that out without recording it we'll go into it again shortly i'm going to hit the uh, hamburger over here we can also go into the sales tab and look at the the all sales transactions this is another way that you might track your receivables and then we're going to look for the open invoices this way this way we're looking at all the open invoices not just the ones you know by customer if you're in the business view by the way it's a little bit different location it's in the bookkeeping and then within the bookkeeping you got the transactions up top and then you've got your sales transactions there's where it's located in the business view so that's those are the ways that you can get in there then we can we can sort all these items we could sort the transactions this way we can go to invoices which is quite common and then open invoices what is what we're often sorting for when we receive a payment then we can apply it out to the invoice so we could do we could do it this way with the receive payment but let's do it this way let's imagine we received a payment i'm going to hit the plus button and then I mean, we, we had an invoice. Now we're going to go to the receive payment. Now, just as a side note, you might think, hey, how does the bank feed fit into this situation if you have the bank feeds on? If you have the bank feeds and you have to invoice somebody, there's no cash related to the invoice. You've got to track the accounts receivable, which means even if using bank feeds, you've got to, you've got to see where the bank feeds are going to fit in the system. Now, you might say, well, you could kind of match the bank feed deposit that's going to happen to the invoice uh, and we'll talk more about that in an, another course or section with the bank feeds or you could receive the payment 
and then try to attach it to the receive payment or most likely if you're invoicing you're going to invoice you're going to receive the payment and then we'll put it into undeposited funds we'll talk about shortly and then we'll make the deposit and then you're going to use the bank fee to check double check on the deposit which is basically means you're just going to use it as part of your bank reconciliation process okay so let's go into the receive payment 